Hi, my name is Deacon Jim, and this is St. Bernadette in South Los Angeles. Today is Friday, August 20th, and let us begin, as we always begin, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, as we begin our celebration, let us praise our merciful God. Lord Jesus, you came to seek out those who were lost. Lord, have mercy. You came to give your life for the sake of all. Christ, have mercy. You came to gather into one family your scattered children. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. O oh God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see. Fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that, loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises, which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And let us come together as we break open the scripture. A reading from the beginning, beginning of the book of Ruth. Once in the time of the judges, there was a famine in the land. So a man from Bethlehem of Judah departed with his wife and two sons to reside on the plateau of Moab. Elimelech, the husband of Naomi, died, and she was left with her two sons, who married Moabite women, one named Orpha and the other Ruth. When they had lived there about 10 years, both Malon and Chilion died also, and the woman was left with neither her two sons nor her husband. She then made ready to go back from the plateau of Moab because word reached her there that the Lord had visited the people and given them food. Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye, but Ruth stayed with her. Naomi said, see now, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and her God. Go back after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, Do not ask me to abandon or forsake you, for wherever you go, I will go. Whether you lodge, wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God shall be my God. Thus it was that Naomi returned with the Moabite daughter-in-law, Ruth, who accompanied her back from the plateau of Moab. They arrived in Bethlehem at the beginning of the barley festival. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm, praise the Lord, my soul. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord, his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them. Praise the Lord, my soul. The Lord keeps faith forever, secures justice for the oppressed, gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets captives free. Praise the Lord, my soul. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord raises up those who were bowed down. The Lord loves the just. The Lord protects strangers. Praise the Lord, O my soul. The fatherless and the widow he sustains, but the way of the wicked he thwarts. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, through all generations, alleluia. Praise the Lord, my soul. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Teach me your paths, my God. Guide me in your truth. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a scholar of the law, tested him by asking, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to them, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, 
with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So today, August 20th, Friday, is the feast day of St. Bernard, or Bernard, depending on how you pronounce it. He's an abbot and a doctor of the church, which means he had a lot of scholarly writings. Bernard was born in Dijon, France, in 1090. After a pious upbringing, he joined the Cistercian monks in the year 1111, 1111, and shortly afterwards was elected abbot of the Clairvaux, where his actions and examples were a splendid guide to his brothers in their pursuit of Christian virtue. Schismatic movements, which means there were breakups in the church or breakups in this group, caused him to travel all over Europe in an effort to restore peace and unity. He wrote many books on theology and asceticism. He died in 1153 at the age of 63. That's Saint Bernard, or Bernard, abbot and doctor. So today, again, we have some, some wonderful readings. And the Old Testament, it's, it's always great to go through you know, the, daily, the daily readings because you get all these great stories of the Old Testament. Um, sometimes people that um, maybe we don't, aren't familiar with, but of course the book of Ruth is talking about um, Naomi and so on and so forth. But actually, let's talk about the gospel. I just always like to point the Old Testament out because sometimes people kind of bypass the Old Testaments, but it's always a great time of the year or a great time when you're doing daily masses because you get to get through a lot of the different readings that you wouldn't normally hear. But in today's gospel, uh, the Pharisees ask Jesus, which commandment is the greatest? And this is one of those stories that all of you probably could recite, recite verbatim, you know, or at least give a really good overview of what it was. So it's important to remember that the Jewish law contains, at this point, hundreds of commandments. Because what has happened is the 12 commandments have been clarified and re-clarified and re-clarified. So what we get from all of those clarifications is the book of Leviticus, which is the Levitican law. There's one whole chapter on tithing. There's one whole section on tithing. And how much you should give is dependent on whether you're a man or a woman or your age or your health and so on and so forth. This is the kind of specificity that they went. So they're not just asking about the Ten Commandments. They're asking about the whole Levitican law. So, but this, this, this would not be an unusual question for them to ask. Um, it, it would be fairly common for Jewish teachers to debate and share what they believe are the most important commandments. Uh, you know, which ones are most important, which ones are central. So, of course, it's still a test. They're testing Jesus to see what he says, but it would not be an uncommon question. Jesus' response, actually, is he doesn't take the commandment, he takes two commandments. He takes them right out of Hebrew scriptures. The first, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. We all know that one. And it's drawn from the book of Deuteronomy. Okay, fine. Well, the second one, you shall love your neighbor as yourself, actually comes from Leviticus. So the first one's Deuteronomy 6, 5. The second one is Leviticus 19, 18. Now, these two commandments themselves would not have been new to the Pharisees. But combining these two statements was radical. To take these two commandments from two totally different places and to combine the teachings that was an innovation. That was something new that wouldn't have happened before this. Perhaps, though, the most significant part of this, of Jesus' answer, lies in two statements. He says, the second is like it. Remember? He says, the second is like it. Love the Lord your God, the second is love your neighbor as yourself. Okay? The second thing he says is, and the whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. Both of those statements are radical and very innovative coming from Jesus and maybe insightful for some of the Pharisees. Jesus makes it clear 
that in order to be faithful of the law to the law people must not neglect the teaching to love your neighbor it's imperative to love god and one another you've heard me in other homilies say you can distill all of these laws down to four words love god love people that's it that's all you need to know love god love people no qualifications end of story both of these commandments are central to Jesus's teaching and were adopted by the early Catholic communities. They were the pillars of faith, love God, love people, period. Today, just like the generations who have gone before us, we're asked to reflect on pray and pray, though, on what Jesus meant by neighbor. Love God, love people, love your neighbor, we're called, my brothers and sisters, to reflect on that second word. We know God. We hope we know God. What do we mean by love neighbor? And the answer to that should be an unqualified everybody. But I will leave that one up to you. We have opened our hearts and minds to the wisdom of God and the liturgy of the word. Now let us turn to him humbly and sincerely with these common petitions. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for our Archbishop, Jose, for all the pastors, priests, and deacons of the Archdiocese of Los Angeles, that they be blessed with the zeal and courage to proclaim the values and the obligations of our holy religion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the church, that she may receive from the Holy Spirit the grace and strength to reform herself in the light of the gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our civil leaders and representatives on the national and local levels, that their laws and their lives be an inspiration to all citizens by reflecting right reason and divine revelation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our youth in particular, that they be given the encouragement and the guidance they need to resist the immoral and sinful presence of our current pagan culture. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the needy, the aged, and the lonely, that they be consoled spiritually by the gifts of grace and also receive care, aid, and loving concern from relatives, friends, and neighbors. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died recently, that they may speedily attain the blessedness of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our own personal intentions. God of mercy and compassion, bless us by granting these common petitions. For we plead to you in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And let us come together and pray the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us from every evil and grant us peace in our day. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Made partakers of Christ through our sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conformed to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co-heirs in heaven who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And the Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My brothers and sisters, go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Happy Friday. Have a great Friday. We'll see you back here tomorrow, Saturday. Have a good start to your weekend. Amen.